The FTEC HSI or Horizontal Situation Instrument allows you to determine your position in relation to your current heading or a virtual VOR ground station. The advantage of the FTEC Virtual HSI instrument over a real instrument is that you are able to virtually tune up any object in the navigation database. So you can practice VOR tracking on an airport that is not equipped with a VOR station or track radials to and from your house or local farm strip for example. In addition, where real life VORs are typically quite short range, the FTEC HSI instrument is not limited and you can virtually tune a station over hundreds or thousands of miles if you so wish. If you're new to understanding how VORs operate, think of the ground station as the hub of a bicycle wheel. The hub has 360 spokes that run from the hub to the edge of the wheel. Each one of those spokes is referred to as a radial, and the VOR allows you to track to or from a ground station using those radials. So let's tune up a local VOR in this HSI instrument and see how the instrument operates. You can immediately see here that the instrument is not tuned to any VOR. This is indicated by the needle in its default position and also the uh, icon bottom right hand side, which is for the navigation database is shown in red. You can see that the compass card is slave to our current heading. In the background, we do have a uh, virtual track being uh, played for me uh, to simulate a, a flight. And we can see that the OBS card can be rotated using uh, literally by clicking and dragging the, uh, the, the area or the region around the compass card. If we want to tune a VOR, we can click on the navigation database icon and that will open up the navigation database. You can see here there are a number of things in our local vicinity, including airports, NDBs and VORs. In this case, let's look at the VORs because that's what we want to tune up. And we're going to select a, a local VOR to our current location. Let's pick, um, let's pick Concord VOR. So we click on that, it will immediately tune Concord VOR. You can see the ident Charlie Charlie Romeo being shown at the bottom here. Um, and you can also see that uh, we've now got the to and from flag being shown um, and that we are to the right of the selected radial. Now, the radial selection is done by rotating the OBS card and we can do that um, just by clicking and dragging. So you can see here that we are currently on approximately the 30 radio or 030 radio to the Concorde VOR. So if we look on the map, we might be able to see that. So we can see immediately that the Concorde VOR is uh, in the top right up here somewhere. There it is. Um, and the VOR that we've got selected runs through our, our current location. And the big fat green line is, think of that as an elastic band linking our current location to, uh, to the VOR. So if we move off to, the, uh, off to the left here, for example, you can see that the radial that we chose was the 030 radial, which is indicated by the uh, thin green line. Um, and the fat green line is the current bearing too. So if we go back to the flight deck now, I'd expect the um, needle to be shown off to the right hand side, which it is. You can see here we're using a mock location because I have moved this manually on the map. Um, and you can see we're over 10,000 meters off to the left of the track. So if, if, we, if I bring myself closer uh, on the map to, um, to our current location, uh, or to, sorry, to the current radial, um, let's see if we're within 10,000 meters there and that's it we'll drop ourselves there head back to the flight deck um, you can see there we're closer in uh, the needle is closer to uh, the middle and we are currently 2,500 meters off of the radial track if we rotate that so that we are bang on 034 and go back we can see there that the thin line goes straight through our current track um, if we wanted to change that, for example, so that we're flying away from the, the um, Concorde VOR, which is what we are there, so on the 224 away, um, and flick back to the map, um, there's the radial. If we look where we are on the needle, it's showing us that it's off to our left-hand side, which it is. And again, if we move ourselves on the map to the other side of it and go back to the instrument, we can see the, the instrument reflecting that accordingly. So if we flick back to the, our current actual location by hitting the button on the bottom left, back to our flight deck, um, and there we go, that's back live tracking on the Concorde VOR. So let's create a custom radial, uh, or a custom station even. So if we go to the user stations on our navigation database, um, there are currently no user stations in our database, so let's create one. So we hit the plus button. Um, it defaults to our current location, so in this case we're, we're, we've got a simulated drive uh, down the 101. So let's create a, a virtual VOR. Let's put let's create a virtual VOR on Pier 96, shall we? Um, 
don't know what significance that is. I'm not a local person, but let's create a VOR at P96 and let's call that um, uh, P96 virtual. Oh, I got it wrong around. And give it a, a name uh, Peer 96. Um, hit the green button. Uh, user Navigate P96V has been successfully added. You can see it there now in our user list. It's 29 nautical miles away. If we flick back to all, it, it will be in this list somewhere. So this is ordered by distance. So if we fly down here, or it was about 26 nautical miles away, wasn't it? So here we go. Where is it? Uh, Pier 96 is there. So it's currently 29 nautical miles. So let's tune that up. So this is our custom station. So P96V is now tuned. If we go back to the map, uh, we can see our current location and we can also see if I scroll our location up, just actually just move it slightly. Um, there we go, Pier 96 is up up here. So that's shown the, the line, or that, well, we've moved our location now. So actually that's a good, let's zoom in a little bit and show this. So let's zoom in. So there we go. So I've currently manually positioned us uh, to this location out in San Francisco Bay. So if we go back to the flight deck, um, that depicts that situation. So um, the needle is off on our right hand side, as it would be on the map. Again, if I move ourselves to the other side of the radial, head back to the flight deck, you can see that depicted there. If I rotate the radial so that we are two. 201, head back to the map, that's depicted as it is there. You've also got a heading bug, um, so you can click and drag the heading bug, you can pick, grab either end of it, so either the heading end or the reciprocal heading end to rotate the heading bug, and you can use that as you as you wish, uh, as you're using the instrument. Let's head back to our current location. Um, and in aircraft settings, um, you have a number of visual display options. Um, so you can show the magnetic true indicator, the cross-track error, uh, uh, um, cross-track error indication, and the station ident. Um, so you've got the cross-track error, the station ident, and the mag true indicator up here. You can uh, change the heading source from automatic GPS or magnetometer. So if you wanted the instrument to always use uh, GPS ground track, for example, you can do so. Or if you wanted it to always use the internal sensor, you can do so as well. In automatic mode, what it will do, it will use the magnetometer when you're below the GPS transition speed. And when you uh, get go travel faster than the GPS transition speed, it will automatically choose the GPS ground track as its heading source. You can change the GPS transition speed in the uh, app-wide settings. So currently it's set to eight kilometers an hour. If we set that to ten, for ex uh, well, to ten, for example, oops. that will be the the threshold from when the instrument will toggle between using the internal sensor, barometric, uh, 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 magnetic sensor, and the uh, GPS ground track. You can also change the heading reference. So currently all headings are, or the instrument uses magnetic bearings. If you wanted to flick to true, you can do. Um, so if we flick back here, it's now showing true indication up there. So all bearings and everything to do with the instrument is now using true, true, uh, true headings or true bearings. It's a really nice instrument, this. Um, very customizable really visual, very, very easy to use when you're flying. Um, thank you very much. That's the HSI instrument. I hope you enjoyed it.